Okay, I'm hitting record. <clears throat> Hello. Okay. My name is GCAM. And my name is Odysseus. And this is the Eighth Path, Eight Path Podcast, correct? Eight Path Podcast, yep. Oh, yeah. So we're going to be reacting to this video that I found. I really wanted to see it. I knew that you were going to like really find this interesting. Okay. I thought my audience would find it kind of interesting. Uh, I've been wanting to create some content for y'all for a little bit, but you know, I don't really have the best looking setup here. I'm a little yellow, but it's all right. You're going to just talk and you enjoy. Let's see. First, we got to make sure that you actually can hear everything. That's kind of important. Let me share this computer sound. Can you hear this? The mail. This man is my. Yeah, I can hear good. that. Good? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Yeah. Being alpha does matter. And to people that doesn't know what that means, to people that don't know what that means, alpha is just basically meaning alpha male. This man is macho. He's confident. He's strong. Does being an alpha matter? Yes, it does. I was going to stop it before he said that. But anyhow, in your opinion, like, what do you think? What does being alpha mean? You know? It, yeah. Yeah. Oh, seriously. It, well, I mean... That's a big question. Are, are we talking about the stereotype? Are we talking about like the the, the way you in, an alpha person interacts? Notice that I say person. It doesn't have to be a fucking man that's an alpha. That takes, Anything. Yeah. Is it the stereotype where the alpha is just the leader? Is that what you mean by alpha? Somebody who just takes charge? That's what I would probably push it to be. The person who may take charge but will also take the responsibility if things kind of fail or don't go as well they're willing yeah. to take charge but they're also willing to take that responsibility in my mind yeah so and That's, yeah i do I do think it matters is how you, it's just how you interact with that person or or group i guess you can say or too. group how do you interact with group? do you know who it matters to it matters to other men that's right okay being alpha matters to other men so yes if you are interested in impressing men that are interested in that stuff <laughs> then it's very important and i think that you should you know get as big and strong as possible lift weights they should maybe grow a beard real big maybe even like get a jaw enhancement okay. to make your jaw bigger and don't take crap from nobody and if anybody says anything mean to you slap him across the face oh, yeah, punch good. him in the gut i don't know drive really fast in your car get in a car accident you know it's, stuff it's like chill. that when it comes to women and dating does being alpha matter not one big fat chance it doesn't matter at all most communities women don't care whether somebody is really big and macho and acts really tough and cool or they act i don't know Childish, playful, vulnerable, funny, silly, idiotic, doesn't matter. What's really important, what really matters, is knowing the type of person that you are, knowing the type of woman that you're interested in, and then going and finding that woman. Women are known to like many different types of men. Pamela Anderson loved Tommy Lee. What was- Okay, before we get to that, that's an interesting point because when I think about that, mm -hmm. I think, okay, that, that's weird. Okay, so here's my thing. I think an alpha really matters from a perspective of, well, I mean, what he's talking about, the macho versus, okay, that's a little bit different. When I think of alpha, I'm not thinking macho, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking even in any sort of situation, they're the first one to kind of come up with a, a solution. The one who goes, hey, here's this. Why don't we try this? They're not taking all charge. They're not completely controlling. Everything. They're not a dictator. They're more so the one who goes, they're kind of the collective. They bring the collective together. <clears throat> they're kind of the glue for a collective. And they say, they would say something like, hey, do you want to do this? Okay, cool. We need this to go here. They kind of guide everybody into a collective. Hey, we need to do something oh. for everybody. What are we going to do? I think the alpha takes charge in that perspective. And I think a woman would find that attractive, that quality. I don't know if that would only be an alpha, though. I mean, but there's also the stereotype, right? Mm -hmm. I, like, I think, wouldn't the stereotype just be like the macho man? Or maybe, I guess the stereotype is alpha. 
and I'll figure out. Maybe. I'm not used to the stereotype, I guess. And uh, it's just, it's a vibe. It's an energy that you don't necessarily need, that you don't necessarily need, but it exists. And then you have to know how to kind of deal with it, you know? Yeah. So yeah. if you're in your own like little group and then this alpha dude just shows up out of nowhere and there's nothing to be done and he just starts taking charge, that's... No. Yeah, that's different too though. There's there's nothing that is... Need- he's not... He's doing something that is not necessary for the situation that he's in. That's not really an alpha. That's kind of like a bully pushing things. It's not necessarily even people. a bully. He's just trying to do shit that doesn't need to be done. What's his purpose of doing this stuff? I don't know. Well, that's the reason why I think it would be considered bullying because he comes in there. Uh-huh. One could say that the reason why he's been trying to control things is he has some sort of motive. Or he wants something for himself or he's trying to make other people do stuff so he doesn't have to. Because okay. why else would he be in there trying to shake things up that he doesn't have to shake up? He's putting extra effort. He wants social status in that little group. And he wants to be able to get stuff for himself. That's It's a selfish motive at that point. Versus what I'm thinking in Alpha would be, would be something's falling apart and they're the one who goes, hey, I'll take charge. Because for instance, in that version of what I'm thinking about, you could say you have betas, you have alphas. The betas aren't, I think to be a good leader, you have to also be a good follower. And so okay. in this analogy, the betas are just the ones who go, I submit, go ahead, just to take us there. I'm not willing, or maybe they don't think as quick of you know, a solution. What? Why are you laughing? Okay. <laughs> yeah, if, if you if you describe, describe it like that, like, I'm such a fucking beta, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a pretty good follower. No, but that's a good but thing. But I hate it. Because there's no need to, to lead everything. And you can't lead everything. Because you don't know everything. So whoever knows, you know, being a good follower is also being like, oh, I don't know this. You know it? I'm going to follow you. Yeah. It, it's, it, it, it's an attractive quality, regardless of you're interested in the person or not. So. Yeah. I mean, even for friendships, I think. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I've noticed when nobody takes charge, it, it annoys me. So then I step up, even if I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Why? <laughs> why? That's dope though. Yeah. Why? Because it annoys me that nobody knows what to do. Like it annoys me. Like <laughs> it's like something has to be done. And usually, if they don't step up, they don't really care if you step up. So. Yeah, I've noticed that too. I mean, even working, there will come times where something needs to get done, and mm-hmm. everybody's looking at everybody like. I ain't going to do it. So and that's that chance where like, I would say the alpha would be like, I'll take it. I'll do the, you know, I'm, I, nobody wants to do it. I'll do it. But if I'm going to do it, I'm going to lay down my rules. Like, and they tend to set guidelines sometimes. They don't always put themselves where they don't need to be. They're just mm-hmm. the one who goes, something has to be done. It's kind of like a duty thing, you know? It's a duty thing. <laughs> <Don't you? laughs> Okay, let's watch a little bit more of this. Okay. Cool about him. He kind of was druggy looking, skinny, weird, oh, disgusting. I mean, he kind of looks like a germ. What about Harry Styles? I mean, you couldn't get less alpha than Harry Styles. Uh, he wears literally dresses to award shows. There's nothing less, I would say, alpha than that. But then on the other hand, but a lot of people would also oh. consider it alpha due to the fact that he's doing whatever he wants and he doesn't care and he does it confidently. Yeah, the, he contributes alphas to being like super masculine. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Too. That, that's that's where I kind of like. I'm not. You can find women that are alphas. Oh, you mean masculine, or do you mean like? No, because he's defining alpha. in the example in the video. He's showing like. Oh yeah, he's wearing a dress. That's not very alpha. Like, eh. it's a exactly. statement. That's why I think is if you're talking about the confidence level and your sort of ability to take charge or or be the dominant force in like a room, then Harry Styles does that very well. He he goes in there and he takes up space. A lot of people aren't com- confident with taking up that space, and that space doesn't necessarily mean. Well, 
in dominating the, other people, but it's just sort of it's sometimes it's the confidence and it's the charisma. Yeah, but in my opinion, in in the various like videos I've seen of Harry Styles, he's not a very um d dominant. Uh, he's not a very b domineering or like if that I makes mean, any he, sense. He, he doesn't take. Of, no, I'm he, just he, saying he doesn't really take up good. space in the room in that sense. Uh, whatever. I haven't seen it, much interviews with him, but he does have a good charm. Yeah. Which one could also consider an alpha quality. Yeah, he's very confident. He doesn't need he doesn't need your attention. You want to give it because it's Harry Styles, you know. You see, that's that's also what I would consider an alpha. Because in my opinion, uh -huh. or I guess my mindset, an alpha isn't some thing that some people are just that, and then other people will always be beta, or or zetas. <laughs> what the fuck? Is I mean, a zeta? Generation Alpha is coming, so we're gonna have Generation Beta too. But <laughs> other than that. I think I'm an alpha in certain perspectives, and okay. then I go into other uh, in other scenarios, and I'm just not that. I'm the one who's following and learning, and or the person who's very quiet, <clears throat> quiet demeanor. Uh -huh. And I feel like the same happens for a lot of people. It just certain qualities in a person that that makes them more naturally the one who tends to be the alpha in certain scenarios. But that doesn't mean that they're always it. It just means that they are the ones who frequently become it. Like okay. for me, if I'm in a certain position, mm -hmm. there are certain things that I do naturally that will push me into that direction. Other things I do that would naturally pull me out of it. Okay. So it just depends on the other people around me that could pull it out of me or like take it away from me. Does that gotcha. Or less yeah, yeah. Me, I guess. So. Yeah, let's watch a little bit more. Okay. And there's uh, Jason. Who's that big tough guy? On Game oh, of Jason Thrones. Momoa. Momoa. Considered by lots of men. Alpha, right? He's married to a beautiful woman too, right? That's fine. Most musicians are pretty emotional and vulnerable. They're not alpha or macho whatsoever. So why do women like them? You have to realize that it has nothing to do with personality that women are attracted to. Each person has Did he different- Did say that? Mm hmm? He just said it has it's nothing to do with personality? Yeah, I think he, he's referring to it's more about the confidence and what you do and what you like. So, what do I mean by that? I, I think he's getting at, like, it's not going to be personality. It's about if you like what you do, it just kind of rubs off on other people. That, or if you're busy doing something that you're, bu that, that you're passionate about. It's, yeah, I mean, it, doesn't it go into that scarcity of your time? attraction that a lot of people so for instance a lot of people can get attracted to a human uh, or individual mm -hmm. that they can't if you're always there you're always able to text back and stuff like that i'm talking about like <clears throat> in the dating and you're initially meeting the person mm -hmm. not when you already are with the person that's a little bit different but if you're new to this re relationship yeah like you're just kind of talking to them you're in the talking yeah phase. figuring each other out yeah exactly in that state, <clears throat> the person is talking to you and you're just like, hey, I'm here, always. Mm -hmm. Versus someone who's like, hey, I love talking to you, it's great, but I'm really passionate about this other thing, so I can't communicate with you right now, but I'll talk to you later. And then the oh. person's kind of seeing how they have to kind of fight for the time a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that becomes, it's the, I forget what the principle is called, but it's basically a form of scarcity. You know, any commodity I mean, that's scarce, you want a little bit more. Okay. And so oh, yeah, that kind of like, happens too. Your time is that. precious and they want to be, take some of that, You're like be part of that precious. Yeah. And it, it also inspires them You're, to they're worth. find what they can do that also pull, like creates that in themselves. So for instance, if you see that someone else is just so important and passion, I mean, they're passionate about stuff that they find important, it makes you go, man, I feel like I'm always available for everything. I need to find where I'm passionate about stuff. You're a little and bit of what? Their time there. Wait, what did you say? I missed that. <laughs> um, like I missed like the last 10 seconds. If they find out that, you know, the person, whoever they're interested in, mm -hmm. is very passionate about something mm -hmm. that they find important, they tend to also want to do that for themselves. It, it, it inspires a, I need to find out what I'm passionate about. So I'm like doing something that I care about when I can't be communicating with this person or this other person. 
yeah. I'm not going to sit around waiting for you. I'm going to go do something that I care about. And then that starts rubbing back off and it starts becoming attractive. It's an attractive yeah. quality. It can be, but it also can be like a, it has a negative side to it too, where it's like you're constantly doing something else and you don't make time for other people. You know what I mean? I don't know. I mean, once you get to know each other, you're going to want to spend a little bit more time together. No? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, but let's let's get back. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why are you sorry? It's okay. Yeah. Interests. Each person was born with different interests. Whether they're beautiful or not so beautiful in your eyes, that person, their looks have nothing to do with what they're attracted to. Like and said, uh, that's the way it's always going to be. So instead of focusing on trying to be as macho as possible, instead of focusing on trying to be as manly as possible, that's cool if you want to go around other men that are interested in that stuff. They love that. They get all hot and sweaty for that. But when it comes to women, women are just really interested in what they're interested in. And okay, so I see what he's trying to say, but... If he's going to apply it to men and say, men, that's cool only if, if men like it. But technically, that's also cool for the women that find that attractive. Like based on, but he's trying to ignore that aspect just so he can say, this only doesn't, it only goes for men and just men don't try to overdo it. And I get it. Cause there and you have to also keep of, in mind his definition of, of, al of alpha, you know? He's talking about yeah. like this, yo, yo, I'm big and strong. I got to do it my own way. <laughs> My way or the highway, and the highway sucks. So my way. You better you know? say it my way. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Like like uh, Chuck Norris. Uh, okay, Chuck Norris, he, he's a completely different beast, okay? He Is scares he the boogeyman. You know, little oh, kids check under their bed for come back. the boogeyman. And beneath the bed of the boogeyman, he checks if there's Chuck Norris. So, <laughs> it, it's a, it's a, I mean, what's his name? Uh, the, the, the crooked name? Crooked, crooked, bit neck lady from. Uh, if anybody knows what that show is from, I forget what the show is called. I have no idea what you're bit talking neck about. Lady. You don't know bit. the bit neck, bit neck, bent neck lady. Nope. Come on, the bent neck lady. Her neck is bent. She was bent. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> bent neck. Okay. Yeah. Given some neck. I'm sorry. Something like that. She she might have fallen quite a ways. Oh no! no, no. I think she fell into the past. Fell into the future. It Wait, is this weird. Harry Potter? Like one of the ghosts? Like Sir Headless? No, no, no. Nick? Bent Neck Lady is from The Haunting of Hill House. That's what it's from. The I haven't of seen it. Very good show. Though. Very, very, very good show. Um, okay. It's like what's unique about the show is that you kind of go back in time constantly for flashbacks and stuff. Okay. And then, like, stuff that you thought didn't matter, like, when you're first seeing the show, like, as it goes longer, it goes uh -huh. backward. It's like, that was this. And then it goes even more back. That was this. And then it goes, it went and played a whole scene and then replayed the whole scene again from another perspective. But you saw, like, different parts of what you saw. And it, bro, watch it. Okay. Haunting of Hill House. Okay, send me the link later. I will. Jellybean told me all about it. What was Jellybean? It was really good. You know who Jelly Bean is. It's a jelly bean you get from the candy store. Who's the lucky person? <laughs> it's not a person. It's Jelly Bean. Jelly it's bean? a candy. It's his perfect individual. Um, so let's finish watching this. Okay. Everybody's different. Again, I want to go back to the basic advice here. Figure out who you are, what your values are, and then figure out the type of woman that you're interested in. That's it. Oh, yeah. See, totally. I agree with that. What do you think? Wait, you look like you're sweating. You don't like that? No, it, that's a tall order for me because I barely know what the fuck I am. You know? What do you mean? I, I I don't know what the fuck I want. But I'm always telling you, like, well, here's the thing, too. Whatever virtues and values you tend to uphold, you mm -hmm. will show that in your character and you will show that whenever the situation arises. And so that tends to that tends to emanate off of your body and people right. see that and they feel it from you or not even your body maybe your spirit you could say it emanates from your spirit and people are interacting with you and then you will literally like for instance if you don't emanate uh 
caring a lot about like materialistic things, mm. um, you're just not going to attract people who like that. You're going to attract maybe once in a while you catch a fringe someone, but like in general, they'll talk to you and they'll be like, "Oh, he doesn't. He's not materialistic. I don't care about him. He's not going to buy me a lot of things or whatever." But if you attract people who care about their items but they don't care about it too much, and you show that just by talking, just by being, you're going to literally attract the type of woman you would want or friends that are like that too, just by interacting with people. See what I'm saying? Like that's that's why what I like about what he's saying is that you do this part first, then people just kind of flow to you that are yeah, like Yeah, you get, see, you can, you point, you get pointed in your, you, you know what you're looking for. You have a better idea. It's kind of like, it's kind of like when you're uh, on eBay and you have all these options that you can say, oh, do I want it this model? Do I want this? Do I want that? Or do I want that? Mm-hmm. It narrows down your search. It you're does. literally, because once you're done putting in all the checks, <clears throat> you can't breathe. This room is dusty. Anyhow, you put in all your checks. Then you start scrolling down the, um, this looks like I'm heading something. <laughs> you scroll down the, uh, the page. And now all you're seeing is people that actually would fit you. You're not just looking through like a billion options. You're looking through, you see what I'm saying? It's kind of like, I don't know if it's a crappy analogy. No, I, I get it. You you have an idea of what you're looking for, like it's something specific. And like, the thing is, if you look for one product or one on eBay, let's say, then you can compare the prices for the same fucking product. You know. Now, what does that mean? What does Analogy that mean? Analogy-wise, I don't know how this actually uh, would go into. I'm not, have a, huh? I'm, not I'm not laughing at you. <laughs> No, you're laughing at me i'm not laughing how at dare you okay <laughs> no just the it's, idea it's not that, acceptable like, oh wow i'm sorry My, how I'm dare you correct. let me calm down let me you know get all your ideas you think just because you got glasses i'm not i'm not i'm not gonna call hey, you out on I'm your on bullshit the, i'm more of a victim than you are i'm sorry you're more of a victim My glasses have you seen these glasses there's only one <laughs> leg you see they're you see they're not they're not even real glasses they are real glasses i'm no, lying they're they're, they're basically a monocle with two with two monocles. <laughs> basically, yeah. basically at this point, because you're holding it with one. No, hand. but like that idea. <laughs> no, that idea kind of sounds like you buy women. You go, which woman costs less? <laughs> no, I, are you saying? Wait, are you saying that? I don't know what I'm saying anymore. You're Look. comparing the value of. Of what of um, no, you just get a okay. virtues and values that someone has versus someone else's values, and you can no, essentially what I'm saying is you have a clear idea of what you're looking for, and then you're, once you have like an idea, you will find a bunch of people that are kind of can kind of fit in that mold and what you want. Mm-hmm. And yeah, uh, and then you can compare and contrast their virtues, values, their systems, and what that could if that, pull away from you, which or which one is a better you. fit for you? You know. Yeah, and I guess. Financially, if not financially, but like when you're talking about well, yeah, if you're talking about like an actual item, then yes, you want might want to go with something that's a little bit cheaper. Like if we're talking about eBay, something secondhand used. But if we're talking about people, and we're just talking about the qualities that we're looking for. So, but if you're looking at like what you were saying, like the money part of the analogy, you could say that buying an item means that you lose money. So it it takes something from you, the cost of it to you. How much are you going to lose? if you get that or what are you going to gain if you get it right so you okay. could say that if you <laughs> let me let me finish this analogy so you could say that if you get with a, a partner or you get with someone mm-hmm. you can judge their values and in, in uh, virtues and compare it and contrast it to another person's virtues and values and then mm-hmm. say hmm which one am i going to lose a little bit more from this person likes this but i actually not about that i'm going to have to lose a part of myself that uh, because I would have to accept something I'm super against. You see what I'm saying? Maybe they're okay. First of all, if you have to lose different. something that you're super against, like lose something. Well, not about super yourself. against. It could be partially against, or you know, like for instance, I've heard of couples where one person really didn't like, um, they didn't like a smell, and the other person was like, it's not a big loss. They didn't last very long because he didn't like the smell, and well, so that's they probably lasted like one of those years. primal things, you know? Exactly. So it doesn't seem like it's a lot. It's like if what you smell shit you, everywhere you go, is that something you want to experience in life? Yeah, but someone could say, hey, it's just, you know, that's small. It's shit. You're not super against it. 
It's just a shitty smell, you know? Like, what is this? This tastes like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -mm. Fecal matter. Footstool yeah. stample. <laughs> so how Manure. do you feel about this? I'm sorry. I, I, I agree with, I just wish he kind of had a broader... No, but it, you have to go by his definition to understand what yeah, he's talking about. Yeah, by his definition, I get what he's saying. But I don't agree too much with the definition. Machismo. Toxic Cause, masculinity. Cause, see, you could say those two then. I, if you were referring to those things, that's not an alpha to me. I don't think it's good. It's helpful to say alpha by itself is like part of those things. I don't know. To me, I feel like alpha qualities can be in men, women, anybody. Mm -hmm. You know? And then they, and, they're, and you have them and then you don't have them. Mm. Or you have them and then somebody else has a little bit more than you in this specific environment. But he's really just talking about machismo, which is very known. So you could just say machismo. It's not only in the Latin, Latin, you know, Latin American community. Okay. Let's, let's hear a little bit more of this. Think about what her interests are. Think about her quirks, her personality type. If you like this video, if you like what I'm talking about, if you like, uh... <laughs> Notice how he's like, yeah, if you like this video, you like what I'm talking about. He's using the vocal fry. He's just trying to be a little cool, you know? No, no, the vocal fry. Yeah, he's like doing the vocal video. fry. He, he's like what I'm talking but he's, about. But there's this extraness yeah. to it. There's a little bit extra to it. Social advice that doesn't have to do with red pilling red stuff pill. or like tough guy stuff. Or tough guy red stuff. Pill, tough guy stuff? Is red pill like tough guy stuff? No, I, th I think... I think he has a bad view on red pill. Well, what is red pill with fully? I don't know. I had this conversation with like another person the other day and I didn't know if it was like a political thing or if it was just like trying to understand an opposite point of view that you didn't have. I, I, I didn't get it. I think red pill is more so the concept. The concept is it's kind of like the woke concept, like now I'm woke, basically. Really? Yeah, it's, I mean, because when you're woke, you just you know stuff that you didn't know you were asleep before. And I think the red pill is like, hey, I was taking the blue pill, you know, like from uh, Matrix or whatever. I was taking, I don't, I've never seen it actually. Sorry. Um, in the you never seen the is Matrix? No. Is it good? Dude, my little brother I just said it. I the third episode, I mean, third movie. What did your brother say? He just said that's sad. <laughs> <laughs> How did your brother? How have you seen it? And I haven't. He watches it with my mom. Well, that makes sense. See, I don't watch it with my mom. How old are you? Let's not go there. <laughs> How old am I? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's listen. I'm as old as a koala. Okay, let's just finish watching this. <laughs> Acting like, ooh, that's for men to compare men. Women don't care about this stuff. If you like that, so I just think that's okay. not fully accurate. Th because there, there is an element, though, to it. that, yes. to like men versus men, kind of like competition. It's there. That really. is, yeah. <clears throat> you and don't want to use that with women. You just don't. It's also. Or but there is an element of sometimes men competing against men. Like, remember, uh, well, here's the thing. I don't know. All I know is that in the past, there was a uh -huh. lot of men competing against another man to win the favor of a woman. And a lot of times women didn't care. They're just like, what are you doing? But then That's whoever went there and talked to her first. <laughs> <laughs> just, hey, you want to marry me? And she's like, well, I'm thinking about it. And I actually feel like, and I guess like, cool. So she said, yeah. I, I <laughs> and she's just like, no, he stole me. Like, yeah, it's just weird. I'm not sure. I wonder because there's an element of if, if it's happening a lot, okay. is it working a cup a little bit, or it was just, it just a different time, you know? No, not I'm not talking about the past. I'm talking about okay. now. Now, now there's an element like for instance, catcalling. Yeah. I'm against it personally, but I also don't. I hate it. Yeah, right. No, but I, I not that I hate it. Like that anything. people do it. It's just I I I don't do that because it makes me, me feel either. uncomfortable. I feel uncomfortable. And I don't like when people give me compliments. Just don't. I don't like it when I don't know you and you give me a compliment. But it's not like I don't, I don't mean it like I don't like it, but I just said that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I mean is like, I just feel uncomfortable, you know? Okay. It's just, but I'm, I'm thankful. It means something. I give them, I give compliments to people in general, whoever you are. 
but that's more so so I can make people feel more comfortable around me when I'm out and about. But um, okay. when you're talking about like cat calling, it's just it's generally like disrespectful comments that you don't expect to go anywhere. So why are you doing it? It's not going anywhere. But here's the thing: I have a couple friends who have gotten cat called mm-hmm. and then gotten in relationships with the cat caller. So that makes me go. Well, it depends. If the guy just comes up to you and he says something kind of attractive and nice and he looks good, that's mm-hmm. probably why it's working, right? But then they literally, when I asked them, I was like, hey, was, were they just being kind of nice? They're like, well, and I'm like, was it an actual cat call? They're like, yeah, he called my this, that. And he said this, that to me. And I'm like, okay, so are, are they really the reason why this kind of people who are going to- Could you give me an example of a cat call? Basically, he was talking about a. Uh, uh, she had a nice tush. A tush, tush. A nice tush. Tush, kush. The tush, tush was kush, kush. That's too much. <laughs> How was that too much? Kush, kush. <laughs> Never mind. So he, so he was talking about that, and she was like, "I was like, nah." And then I looked back, and he was really attractive. So yeah, now we're in a relationship. It's been three months. I'm like. How much of that is happening where someone does it and it works? And that's part of the reason why people are still doing it. I will also say not, that doesn't mean that everybody is seeing it and they clearly see that it works. But I think there is an element of some people doing it and it works. Because if it's working, that's what guys are going to, guys do what works to a degree. And half of it is just doing it because they don't know what's better. Because, you know, poor raising or poor morals, really, I think. Why would it be have good virtues. Here's the reason why I say it would be a moral thing. I think it's to more me. of a respect thing. That's why I think it's a moral thing. If you can't respect other people, is it moral? Immoral? It could be considered. It could also not be. But to me, you know my background beliefs. It's a little bit different. I think, like, for instance, if you meet a girl and you're just mm-hmm. like, hey, mama, whatever. That's just, there's a level. There's a whole You also have to spectrum. take into account, like, location in the context, yeah. right? Fair at the yeah. club. That's why I say that's different. But I think there's a whole spectrum to, you know, catcalling and everything. If you're talking about catcalling at its normal to light range in clubs or, you know, that's different. Imagine you're walking home from work, right? You've been working all day. You're feeling like crap. And as you're walking home, you hear this. What a nice big tush you got. I'd be like, oh, thank you. Okay, I felt no. really bad. I got sweaty, but but thank you. That's what I would say. <clears throat> but if <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm joking. No, but if you're going home yeah. and it's late and you feel uncomfortable and then the guy is saying all this stuff and the guy knows mm-hmm. circumstances or he kind of knows that it's not very safe for you and he already and he's saying all these disrespectful stuff to you. To me, I could say that it, it's not that you, that the action itself per se is immoral because I wouldn't deem it. I think that's strong to say. So I will retract how I worded it before. But what I'm trying to say is that not it, it indicates that there's a possibility behind that, that you don't really regard what she regards as a, you know, for respect. You're not respecting her where you think she may, you know, where her boundaries are. If the bound uh, crossing thing. And I think boundary crossing with when you know that there's an issue, like, you know, that it's not safe. I think, I think know boundary crossing is more of a thing that you do with like people you kind of know better. That's and where yeah, there's a little bit different. of trust. Yeah. Because there's trust. There's no danger element. There's no fear element to the same degree. There can still be, but I think, yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard to argue if it's immoral fully, but I think one could say people who cross boundaries of people they don't know, and they have complete utter disregard for their respect. That's, it's showing that there's some moral weirdness there. You see what just saying? how they were brought up. They don't know. Well, maybe they do know. Over. They don't care. That's why I think. Okay, it's weird. that's where it gets kind of messed up. That's why I think it's a moral thing because they know, like, hey, the girl's like, hey, be quiet or whatever. Middle finger up. You know, I just do this. But then the guy's like, wow, mama, like, you're just really, you know, have you noticed this thing where a guy will compliment a girl? The girl's mm-hmm. like, Thank you, but I have a person or whatever, and or I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a I'm cue not to you to like back off. Like I'm not interested. I was like, oh, got it. 
Yeah, Leave but some guys will, and some women do this too. This is a person thing. It's not. We're just referring to guys. This is the topic that we're talking about. But this is a person thing. Someone gets feels so hurt by the rejection. They're like, "Well, never mind. You disgust in any way. I would have never. You did." And then just say all types of horrible things. There's a there's a character flaw there. That I don't know if it's immoral per se. I think immoral is when you really have a disregard for the for another human's like respecting another human like the, a complete disregard and you know that's a little bit different we can argue about that in another podcast maybe yeah, what like, we think like if that's an actual moral for, thing for me not. like morality is not something that i really like to discuss you think about it i don't think about it like i think there are things that are that you could argue about that but i think that gets kind of into religion and kind of okay yeah and one could say that and I think respect is something that's a little bit more universal. That, that's what I'm referring to, not religion there. I'm thinking respect. But it also is very relative to like culture and mm-hmm. it's relative to the people. So if, but I'm not talking about the relativity, rel- relativity. The person who is catcalling another person grew up in that society. He knows that a lot of people find it not comfortable, if the, but that's okay. The girl goes, hey, I don't like this. Stop it. And the guy goes, I don't care. I feel like I want to say this to you, so I'm going to say it. That's where I go, hey, that's a complete disregard for her re- respect levels. You're breaking her boundaries and you don't care. That's a character flaw that could err on the side of immorality at some point, depending on how far you take that. But if you're showing disregard for something simple as, hey, I just don't want you to talk to me and you don't know me, so why are you doing this? That's where I go, hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why I think it airs in the immorality area. I, it's difficult to say fully, um, but for me, I think it's just wrong, so I don't do it. So, but if I'm saying that I think it's wrong, I'm kind of saying that mm-hmm. I don't find it a good behavior for me, which if you break that down, why do I think it's a bad behavior for me? Perhaps I think it's immoral, but I don't, you see what I'm saying? I don't know. If you break it down at those levels, it's something to think about first. Okay. <laughs> we went on but, a whole diatribe. Well, yeah, let's finish up the video. Let's. Yes, let's do that. Subscribe. Hit the bell oh, notification okay. thing. See Sorry. me more often. Comment down below and ask me a question of your own. not talking like this in the beginning. Okay, go down. Go down the... Other than that. But then on the other hand... See, and there's... then by the ending... Subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. It's kind of a suave voice. Yeah. But anyways, you should check out his channel. Uh, what's yeah, his, name? his... He's a great Anthony YouTuber. Rene... Um, no, Ranchello, Ranchinello, or Ren- hey, you're Italian. Ranicello. You can read this. Come on. No, I, th- I think he goes by Anthony Renicello. Let's see. Renicello. Yeah, he's got great. He has content. great content. Yeah. Definitely subscribe. Watch him. I'm about to subscribe. Actually, let's do that right now on air. Boom! I just found him today because he told me about him. Wow, yeah, great he- viewer. Anyhow, we're going to probably react to more of his stuff. If you like it, uh, let us know. Um, <laughs> this has been very fun. We haven't, I haven't done a podcast in a little bit, so I've been very much enjoying this. Yeah. So, yeah, bye, guys. We'll see you all later. Peace. Peace out. <laughs> hmm.